This is the biggest conspiracy of the past 100 years. Vitamin D is incredibly important, so underplayed in the media, so ignored by governments, and perpetually neglected by the big pharmaceutical companies. Providing this incredibly cheap supplement would reduce sales of pharma companies' more expensive drugs and hence lower their profits. Hey guys, this is Harry. In this video, I'm going to explain the vitamin D deficiency epidemic. I'm going to explain why Big Pharma don't want you to know about it and how a few of these little pills taken daily have the potential to reduce your chances of adverse COVID-19 effects. Everything I say from this point on has been published in peer-reviewed medical journals or said by highly qualified doctors and academics. I'm going to keep it very simple by showing you the evidence and its conclusions and showing you what to do now that you've taken this figurative vitamin D red pill and understand the pharmaceutical industry for what it truly is. Before I start, this is for educational purposes only. Do not take this as medical advice and please see a qualified physician to tailor solutions to your own specific circumstances. Everyone is different. Now, let me begin. There is a pandemic going on right now. There is also an epidemic, but only one of these is talked about. It is estimated that over a billion people worldwide are vitamin D deficient or insufficient. 70% of the US has vitamin D insufficiency. 29% have low enough levels to be called deficient. This trend is extremely worrying. So why are vitamin D levels so low in the first place? First, we have to understand where vitamin D comes from. There are two forms, D2, produced by plants, we find it in supplements and fortified foods, and D3, produced by animals. This comes from foods like fatty fish and can also be taken in supplement form. Crucially, the majority of the D3 we consume comes from the sun. Your skin makes D3 when exposed to UVB radiation from sunlight. Both forms can be converted into the useful form of vitamin D that humans need for daily functioning. Now the issue arises in our modern day lifestyles. We wear clothes and apply sunscreen which blocks UVB light. We work inside, especially now during COVID. We don't consume enough vitamin D rich foods, of which there aren't many in the first place. All this leads to the general population being highly deficient. We have subgroups that make up a large part of this general deficient population and are at the highest risk of vitamin D deficiency. The elderly. This research shows 70 year olds producing two times less vitamin D than average 20 year olds. The obese. One study showed obese adults having three times more prevalent vitamin D deficiency than non-obese adults. Darker skinned people. In this study, African Americans were 24.6 times more likely to be vitamin D deficient than whites. Why is this the case? If you have darker skin, you have melanin, which acts as a natural sunscreen and protects us from the damaging effect of UVB radiation, but it also reduces the skin's ability to make vitamin D in response to sunlight. Given the same amount of sunlight exposure, those with darker skin will make less vitamin D than those with lighter skin, as the melanin in the dark skin will block the UVB radiation. This has led to darker skin people being much more likely to be vitamin D deficient than lighter people, given the same geography. This brings me on to the next trend. Why is COVID disproportionately killing darker skin people? Before I answer, let me show you how many dark skinned people are contracting, being hospitalized with, and dying from COVID compared to light skinned people. The numbers are truly astounding. Somalian Swedes make up 1% of the country's population and 5% of the country's cases. Out of the first 15 reported COVID 19 deaths in Sweden, 6 were from the Somali community. In Finland, Somali immigrants made up 14% of all infections and 0.4% of the country's population. It's a similar story in Norway, massively disproportionate numbers. It doesn't stop there. Research in Indiana found African Americans account for almost 10% of the population, but 19% of total COVID-related deaths. This Stanford study found that 53% of all COVID hospital deaths from the first half of 2020 were among Blacks and Hispanics, yet they all make up only 32% of the US population. Another report by the University of Manchester found that black people are twice as likely to die from COVID than white people. Men from Pakistani and Bangladeshi heritage are 1.8 and 1.6 times as likely to die from COVID than white people. Now to answer the question of why darker skinned people are dying in disproportionate numbers from COVID, let's take the case of the Somalians in particular. It's the perfect storm, living in Nordic regions with little sunlight and being dark skinned. Combining both factors leads to massive vitamin D deficiencies. 
The same study found that the great majority of Swedish women of Somali origin also had very low vitamin D levels. In Finland, Somali women required more than twice the amount of vitamin D in order to maintain recommended vitamin D status. These could just be associations, but nevertheless, the study said, in order to cope with the COVID-19 epidemic, preventative measures could be administration of vitamin D to high-risk populations. For example, dark-skinned adults and individuals with risk factors. It's not always helpful, but unlikely to be harmful. Logically, it's possible that vitamin D is the key factor, but the news articles don't mention it once. They all point to social and economic reasons which may well contribute, but to not mention it even once when the proof is so strong, as you will see, is a travesty. Vitamin D and COVID are interconnected, and there is a plethora of evidence behind it. This study found habitual vitamin D users had a 34% lower risk of contracting COVID. Interestingly, the same study also found that there was no association between COVID and the habitual consumption of any other vitamin and mineral supplements. Vitamin D was the only one. The conclusion? Taking vitamin D regularly is associated with a protective effect against COVID-19. Another study found that people with low levels of vitamin D were 6.12 times more likely to be mechanically ventilated and shockingly 14.73 times more likely to die than those with normal levels. The pattern is obvious. Assume a quarter of all people in your country have low levels of vitamin D and they make up 50% of the deaths. Imagine dividing the deaths in your country of those people which could be hundreds of thousands by almost 15. From a worldwide perspective, it's estimated that over 1 billion people are vitamin D deficient or insufficient. According to this study, vitamin D supplementation to those deficient and insufficient could have saved hundreds of thousands of lives. This paper found that those with low vitamin D levels were 45% more likely to get diagnosed with COVID and 95% more likely to be hospitalized, even after accounting for all other risk factors like high BP, diabetes, and obesity, vitamin D levels were still affecting COVID infection and hospitalization. Hence, vitamin D levels appear to be an independent risk factor for COVID-19 infection and hospitalization. And another looked at a huge number of patients and found that there was a greater incidence of COVID-19 with lower vitamin D levels. This one shows that healthy levels of vitamin D could cut the mortality rate by almost half. Now I could go on for another 10 studies, but you get the picture. There are so many more trustworthy peer-reviewed papers highlighting the clear link between vitamin D deficiency and COVID. The lack of coverage is shocking. One of the key conspirators are big pharmaceutical companies. The very fact that they haven't promoted its use in the face of all the research is evidence enough that they are trying to prevent the general public from knowing about it. This article talks of a disinformation playbook used by corporations to delay government action on matters of public interest that would negatively affect their profits. It's written by Dr. William B. Grant, who has a PhD from Berkeley and has researched vitamin D for years. He says this, Big Pharma in the US and Europe are opposing major recommendations for increases in vitamin D intakes, apparently because such measures can significantly reduce the burden of human disease and therefore would reduce profit from treating disease. Logically, it makes sense for them. They have no monetary incentive to promote the usage of cheap vitamin D as it would eat into the profits earned through selling other, more profitable drugs to cure diseases that wouldn't have happened in the first place or whose symptoms would be much less severe. Dr. Grant further says, In 2010, the Institute of Medicine reviewed the evidence regarding vitamin D and was instructed by the study sponsors, the FDA, and the National Institute of Health to use only the evidence from published, high-quality vitamin D randomized control trials. However, by that time, such trials had only found benefits for bone health. They also used evidence from purely observational studies to suggest that there were risks associated with vitamin D supplementation. Clearly, they had some sort of agenda against vitamin D. Big Pharma also contributes to all major disease organizations, many of which do not endorse vitamin D supplementation. These institutions include the American Cancer Society and the National Medical Association, both hugely influential in terms of public health. He also mentions medical schools and how Big Pharma give millions to them for research. As a result, professors devote much of their time to researching and promoting pharmaceutical drugs. This means that disease prevention through lifestyle choices, nutrition, and vitamins is rarely taught. This paper backs this up, saying that physicians need more training in nutrition due to a lack of education in medical school. 
In summary, you can find evidence of negligence by the pharmaceutical industry and indeed by governments for failing to recognize the research and implement a change in medical policy. This should have happened long before COVID, as vitamin D is not only effective against this disease, but it plays a part in so many others. How vitamin D affects almost everything. There is extremely strong evidence that vitamin D is helpful against respiratory tract infections, RTIs. Now, this may sound like a rare sort of infection, but RTIs have been among the top three causes of death among children and adults, with an estimated 4 million people dying from it annually, not including COVID year. Just to compare, COVID itself has killed over 2.5 million people since it began. That's the degree of seriousness we're talking about. Data from 25 different randomized control trials showed that daily supplementation reduced the risk of accurate RTIs by more than 50% in people with the lowest vitamin D levels. People with higher vitamin D levels also benefited as they had a 10% lower risk of acquiring an acute RTI. In terms of its safety, vitamin D did not influence the risk of any adverse events and was safe for the 10,000 people in the study. It also found that one-off large doses did not work as well, and instead it was the habitual daily doses that bore the most benefit. This is from the BMJ, the British Medical Journal as well, which is one of the most respected peer-reviewed medical journals in the world, so it's as accurate as it gets. The conclusion, vitamin D deficiency affects respiratory infections and COVID can lead to one of those. We expected that. But there's more. This study found that colorectal cancer patients who took a high dose of vitamin D were 36% less likely to have disease progression or death during the next 23 months. Vitamin D deficiency is also associated with increased breast cancer risk and multiple sclerosis and cardiovascular disease, which 18 million people died from this year, making up 31% of all deaths worldwide. There's also diabetes, mental health, Let's take a look at depression. This study makes a recommendation of treating vitamin D deficiency in subjects with depression, citing its ease and cost effectiveness. According to the evidence, vitamin D is not only effective against COVID, it has an involvement in a staggering number of diseases, many of which I haven't even mentioned for the sake of brevity. These diseases will remain long after COVID ends, whenever that may be. We need to take action imminently. What you should be doing. Check your levels via a vitamin D blood test. Follow recommendations by your doctor regarding supplementation. For the average person, take daily supplements against occasional large doses as the studies above have shown. Do not surpass the safe upper limit of 4,000 international units if you are an adult, even though overdosing of vitamin D is difficult to do. Supplement during the winter if you live in the north where there isn't much sun. Those more susceptible to deficiency, which were the three groups I mentioned before, the elderly, the obese, and the dark-skinned, then make sure you supplement throughout the year. In terms of specific guidance, the joint advice by many medical associations recommends 15 to 30 minutes with direct sun exposure every day. They also recommend that you supplement with 400 to 1000 IUs daily. These are general terms of advice, not meant for everyone. The crucial first step is to check your vitamin D levels first and consult a physician before supplementing as vitamin D can interact with other medicines you may be taking. This is extremely rare, but it still can happen. But just to reiterate the importance of supplementation, this study showed that 4,000 international units a day for a year eliminated the differences between vitamin D levels between African American and white men. Supplementation does work and is of extremely low risk in general. All right, guys, that's it for me. Hope this was useful. Share the video to spread awareness and potentially save lives. Get your vitamin D levels checked. That's the most important thing you should learn from this video. Sub for more good stuff. And yeah, thanks for watching.